I want to start with uh, congratulations to Coach Dalby, Oregon State men's soccer, making the NCAA tournament, hosting this Thursday, so wishing them the, the best of luck in that game. Um, again, typical Monday, kind of recapping Saturday's game against Stanford. Uh, you know, just a lot of light, a lot to like in uh, both sides of the ball, defensively flying around, creating some turnovers, getting in the backfield. Thought those turnovers early really made a difference, get our crowd into it. Um, offensively pretty efficient um, in the run game, pass game, explosive plays. Uh, I did, you know, point out to the team these, these vitally important fourth down plays. Uh, you know, the first one we go for on our own side of the field, convert that thing, turn it into points. First drive of the second half, fourth and five from our own 35. Wind didn't didn't feel awesome about the kick. They go out there and, and get the thing done and turn that into points. And so I bring that up to the team because the t team we're about to play is really good on fourth down. And so separating things that way. Um, you know, I do want to kind of take this moment to be able to thank Beaver Nation season ticket holders, our crowd, our fans, the people who have been supporting us throughout this season, headed to our last home game. And uh, they've made a difference two, two years of sellouts. And uh, do, do count on this one being being raucous and special here in Reeser with energy and, and the place being packed because we're going to need everything we can get against this, this opponent. You know, Washington's playing the game at the highest level you can. Haven't lost yet. Uh, really good on both sides. Well coached. You know, Coach DeBoer's done a, a good job everywhere he's been, and his record speaks to it. One of the best quarterbacks in the country, throwing it to some of the best receivers in the country. And then on the defensive side, they got some athletes on the edge, make it physical. And so this is a good football team, and uh, we're looking forward to, to the challenge. How fast is Damian Martinez? I mean, we know how fast Gould is and, and Irish. Where, where is he in terms of just speed? Because we saw some of that last week. Yeah, he, was, you know, he has some solid speed. Um, I, he's not the fastest guy on the team, um, but he's got solid enough speed to be able to break away and, and finish at the goal line. His, his confidence level, do you have any – Examples of how you're seeing that growing over the last several weeks in Damien. Yeah, um, I think Damien does take a good discipline approach of not just guessing out there. He's got reads when he hands get him the ball, and he understands how we're blocking it. He's getting to the point he's understanding defensively how they are fitting things. I do think his instincts took over a little bit last week on a couple of cutback plays, and that might lead to showing that he's pretty confident. In regards to that run that uh, Deshaun Fenwick made, are you? Are you okay with hurdling? Some coaches are, some aren't. Right. Well, I, we don't try to overcoach it. Sometimes your instincts just kind of take over, and he recognized the defender was going to go low and, and try to, to hurdle. I don't think we want to make a, a routine of doing it all the time, um, but instincts took over, and it was a big-time play. How do you um, – when it, in terms of measuring how a quarterback is doing from an offensive efficiency standpoint how do you measure what, what's your what are your things that you favor in terms of measuring how a guy's progressing in terms well the overall efficiency number is is saying how efficient he is and so you know the touchdown to interception ratio is something we you know take a lot of pride in and want a good number there limited mistakes scoring points with only touchdowns um you know the completion percentage thing yeah we want to be well over 50 percent but we understand the style that we play, we don't just add to that completion percentage by throwing a bunch of bubble screens and stuff like that. So the overall efficiency and then the limited errors with scoring points. Coach, at any point during Saturday's game, did you know how close Damian was to breaking that all-time record in school history? And was there any conversation with potentially letting him stay in to break that record? Or when it's a blowout, you just decided to take him out? Yeah, we, no consideration on stats, records at, at that point. The game was, you know, he had the awesome first half. The game started to separate. A um, couple of thoughts. When the game starts to separate like that, you got other guys on the roster that have been working hard that have earned opportunities to get in the game. And then your, your mind does flip to the next opponent. And so you want to be as fresh as possible for that. And so all those reasons, you know, Damian wasn't needed much. You've had a lot of tough matchups over your career here at Oregon State. This matchup against Washington this coming weekend, do you think this is the biggest matchup you've had in your coaching career here in Corvallis? Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, kind of where the season stats or records are at and all that stuff, it makes it big. There's no question um, that that's a good program that won a lot of games playing late, you know, so whatever this is, game 11. So you want to play in the biggest games at the end of the year, and, and this, this is a big one. 
Washington's defense has looked at least a little bit more vulnerable over the last couple of weeks compared to what they looked like in the beginning of the season. What are you seeing from them that you feel like you guys can take advantage of specifically here in Corvallis? Yeah, you know, everybody gets tape, right? And so there's some good coaches in this league, and they challenge um, not just specific to Washington defense. Everybody in the league, we're seeing some new wrinkles each week, and so that has that take place. Some of the times these guys are scoring so quickly that that defense is on the field for a while, and so you're going to give up plays when that takes place. I know they run a sound scheme. I know that the line of scrimmage is as good as anybody in this league. Um, and they've won low scoring games. They can win high scoring games. As you prepare for Michael Penix, is there, what's different from last year? And what specifically does he does that hurts teams? What is... Uh, you know, what, what are his strengths? Well, there's a lot of them. He's accurate as all get out. He's got a big-time arm. He's got a, a ton of confidence, which he should, a ton of confidence in giving those guys shots one-on-one. -on -one. He recognizes coverage. He's not all just throwing it down the field, tuck, chuck and duck type thing. The ability to avoid sacks, he's athletic enough, but he's definitely looking to throw. You're not going to fool him with pressure. The ball comes out of his hands. And so the, you know, he doesn't take sacks. He gives guys chances. Accurate. He stands in there when he needs to. That's why he's one of the best in the country. What did you learn during the 2016 season at Washington in terms of you had a lot of big games? How did how did you get the team how did you get the team to calm down in these big big type games? Oh, I'm just reassuring them that they their process on how they prepare week in and week out, and that hadn't changed since we got here to to Corvallis. Um, yeah, it's a big kind big time game, but you don't have to do anything out of the ordinary in regards to your preparation. All a lot of these games come down to like who doesn't. Screw it up. I mean, in regards to just doing what you're doing, being in the correct gap, running your route at the depth, you know, going through a progression, a lot of outside noise and big games, it still comes back to your focus and preparation. You might be the wrong guy to ask about this because you're always the home guy and, and, at research, but what exactly makes research difficult to plan for a visiting team? Because it's not obviously a big stadium. And what, what, what exactly is it? Is it the way the noise comes down on the field? Yeah, I think it's, well, yeah, it's not the biggest stadium, but the energy in the stadium created by our fan base is unique. Uh, not many are like that. I think uh, even the travel piece, you're not staying right here in Corvallis. You're staying, whether you're in Eugene or Salem, that's a transition of about an hour leading into the game. Most places you don't have to do that. Obviously, hopefully the, the product that you're playing, the right, the team you're playing. Um, so I think those play into it. On a week like this, do you, do you just anticipate players being in here more often, watching video and things like uh, on the bigger, I mean, even though you want every week to be yeah. the same, do you expect to see guys in there more, watching more video? And things? I don't know about way more. They're definitely going to be in the building. They've been doing that all year, all year long. Um, Again, we're sticking to our process. We di digest the game yesterday against Stanford. Uh, this is the off day. Hopefully they're out going to class uh, today. And then, yeah, maybe get some early prep on the film. We'll get in there Tuesday morning and talk as a team about the game and, and go through our normal routine practice-wise. And I don't see it being drastically different. It seems like uh, like last year there was a lot of vendage, vendage in the air. Um, I think I said that word wrong. Vengeance. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Kind of after you guys made that bowl game, lost, and then you were able to have a great season and then a bowl victory. And this year, I feel like the expectation was kind of higher. Um, how would you, you describe what, what's motivating this team right now? Is it the big matchup? Is it the week-to-week -week preparation? Is it the end goal? Just what do you feel like is motivating this team heading into this week? Yeah, I think it's more like our goals and, and our process, what we wanted. These guys are competitive. Um, you know, so it, it really is about us. Total, re, you know, we got – ton of respect for UW coming up in here and what they've done. I don't think there's added hype because we're playing those particular guys. Um, but, you know, they've this team wants to be pretty competitive and win every time we line up. Yeah, and I know that last week there might not have been um, for you guys, it's the same hype every week, but the outside noise, there's obviously a lot more hype for this game than there was maybe the last game. So just how do you control that outside um, distraction, knowing that you might not have, uh, you know, these last two games are probably going to be your biggest outside noise game. Spoke to it a little bit um, yesterday to the team and just credit those guys, their maturity, how they handled last week. Because, yeah, there was easy to maybe overlook, trap game, this kind of narrative out there. They came out and played awesome first half and, and left no doubt. So fast forward to this week counting on this maturity of this team to understand. It's about their process going th uh, throughout the week, getting ready, um, and that, that not changing. I know just as a head coach, now that you're able to kind of put the Stanford game you know, behind you, focus on, on this game, just as a head coach, like what matchup are you most excited to see 
uh, to prepare for, and then you know, look forward to seeing if your guys execute on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, it could go a lot of ways here. I mean, you know, what they present offensively, and, and again, the challenge that is for our defense to fly around and, and try to slow it down. Uh, you're not going to completely stop them, but you can try to slow them down, and what that looks like, vice versa, offensively. You know, opportunity against a good defense. It's good up front. Well, we kind of we think we're we're solid up front too in that that matchup. Hey, Coach. So this Washington receiving team has threats at all the skilled positions in the receiving room, running backs, tight ends. How, how do you really attack and approach when, you know, if you double up on the first guy, the second guy is going to take your head off? Yeah, it's hard because they've they got multiple options. And it's not just the receiver room. they got some big-time wideouts, no question. But the tight end's catching a bunch of balls, the back out of the backfield, and they're starting to run the ball the last few weeks and being really effective doing that. And so – and then you throw it in with the, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. So it's tough to just focus in on one thing. You want to play well. We're going to have to play some matchups one on one and win those. Sometimes we're going to have to help some coverage, but we got to create some issues for the quarterback in the pocket, not letting this guy sit there forever. And so you need to mix and match the thing. And uh, Aiden Childs in your quarterback room has just really continued to excel. He looked great versus Stanford. Is there any? You know, pressure to play him a little bit more in this matchup, or do you not want to compromise DJ's rhythm? Yeah, because yeah, that's right. The DJ's rhythm, and he's played really well. I think DJ had like six series, he had six touchdowns, and so we're always trying to balance that. I do. I think it's been effective the way we've done it with the third series. Aiden's gone out there. I think now we're at four or six in that third series of him scoring some points. DJ's gotten back in there, and so that rhythm has worked well. Uh, turning the attention to the defense, what have you seen out of Chatfield so far this season? I mean, top five in sacks in the Pac-12 and interceptions as well, too. How has he stepped up this season from last last year to this year? Yeah, he's uh, he stepped up in a big way. Uh, he just shows up in the backfield, obviously, not being in the right spots, but actually catching the ball on interceptions. not always that easy, and it, it's a great story for him. I mean, he's been working hard and to head to, to, you know, turn this season into the type of thing he's having. He earns a lot of that credit for the work ethic and, and getting put in the right positions. Uh, and in terms of injuries for this week, is there anybody new that we don't know about yet or guys that are right. kind of headed in this week? You know, I think big ones are be, we'll see where Levin Good is at the uh, the end of the week. We're optimistic, but, you know, that'll be an end of the week thing. I think we came out of it okay. We'll, we'll kind of see Grant Stark who got dinged a little bit. That'll be something toward the end of the week to find out. I think Coop uh, came out okay. Um, yeah, those are the kind of headline pieces. Coach, what about Calvin Hart Jr.'s game this past Saturday? How physical he was. Yeah, productive. A uh, bunch of tackles, being in the right spot. I think he's played back-to-back -back weeks. That is his best ball since he's been here, which is, uh, which is really nice to see. You mentioned uh, Washington being able to run the ball. Uh, 256 and 104 back to back for their back. So how good is that back and the ability now making them even more dangerous to hurt you both? Yeah, I mean, when you can be balanced multiple like that, you can't just focus on one side of it. Uh, makes it really hard. I think their schematics are tough too. I mean, these, the guys aren't just lining up in the same formation and running the same place. I mean, they give you some pre-snap looks. They got some tempo to it. Um, unbalanced, got motion that you got to keep your eyes right. And so all of that, when you mix in the run game, your eyes are wrong. Those those runs go for creases. Uh, yeah, they got a big-time receiver quarterback thing, but you can't abandon stopping the run. Sheer arm strength on both sides in this one, from DJU to Michael Penix. I mean, are we talking yeah. about pretty elite-level arms this Saturday? Yeah, arm talent, strength. Um, yeah, I can even remember last year, Penix were up there, and it's blowing pretty good wind-wise. He's throwing that thing right through the wind, tight spirals. I mean, good player. And, yeah, DJ's got a good arm, and, he's, and DJ's playing at a high level too. Since uh, the game against Oregon, Washington has kind of had some close games. Do you guys look at the consistency all of the team? Do you just look at the win? Do you simply just look at the film? Like, what does that say about kind of your opponent that you prepare for, but also your team's consistency throughout the past couple weeks? Yeah, I mean, we speak to these games are going to be tight. These games are going to go down to the fourth quarter. Give credit to UW. They found ways to win in different ways this year, and so that's what really good teams do. Um, like I said, I mentioned some games where they, yeah, they ain't lighting the scoreboard up on a couple, most of them high scoring, and they find a way to finish. And so anticipating that this will be something similar come down to the fourth quarter in this one. Coach, you guys offensively probably had your best performance all season long last week against Stanford. Where is the team's offensive level of confidence heading into this weekend's matchup, and do you think it's where it needs to be 
heading against Washington? I think, you, yeah, anytime you, you come, you play well, it adds to your confidence. I think their confidence comes from their preparation and on how they worked and then the plan put together and buying in and executing that thing. Each week is going to be new. This is going to be new scheme defensively, new players and all of that. And so they, they understand what they're capable of and uh, confident that if they put in some work, they can put out a good performance. Coach, last thing, and, and that is the all the talk about Washington's offense, that defense last week gave up 306 yards in the first half to Utah and then just shut them out in the second half. I mean, yep. was, was it just game adjustments, played better in matchups? What did you see? Uh, I think you, you talk about a competitive group. However, the first half goes, they can make some adjustments and then play for four quarters, give that staff some credit on the defensive side for, yeah, adjustments and emphasizing some things maybe they didn't in the first half. And to anybody in this league to shut them out for a, a full half, that's big-time defense.